Hi guys, welcome to Studio Wildlife. In today's video, I'm going to show you how I painted this leopard in pastels. So I started out by just tracing my image onto the pastel matte paper and then using the carbon black pencil I just blocked in the shape of the eyes and the stripes, oh, sorry the spots around the eyes. I don't usually work like this, usually I do a block in first and then work in my details over the top but for this piece because it's so small I thought I'd work in little sections and render those sections as I went along. So once I've done the black, I block in a little undercolour using, I think it's a chocolate brown. And I do this just so there's a darker layer underneath that I can layer my lighter colours on top later on. I'm just building up the layers of fur now using different yellows. So there's yellow ochre, there's an orange in there, there is a Naples yellow and I'm just building them up on top of each other going from light oh sorry going from dark to light so my lightest layers are going to be on the top when I'm painting the fur I make sure to leave gaps between each strand so that the layers underneath still show through and that really gives the impression of layering especially with these leopards that have quite short fur it's nice to see those layers underneath For the eye, I'm using a little bit of orange, a little bit of green, and then some blue to imitate the sky in the highlights reflected in the eye, and then a little bit of white for the final highlight. I draw the nose in in the same way, so I build up for, with my darkest colours first. So I start with the carbon black, blocking in some of the spots, and then build up with the brown. But for this one, I want a clear lighter area, so I actually blocked in the darker areas with the brown first, and then used the yellow ochre to block in the base colour for the lighter areas, and then built on top of it with various yellows and browns. I pretty much follow the same process for the rest of the painting, but again, I'll just talk through it with you. And just while we're on this, thank you so much to everyone that subscribed to the channel. It means so much to us. And if you are new and you're enjoying this video, please make sure to click on that like button and subscribe. It does really help us out. And I just want to say thank you again to everyone that's already done that. So I'd love to start getting to know you guys a little bit more. So please tell me about yourself in the comments. Please let me know what kind of artwork you're into, where you're at in your art career, and if there's anything that you'd like me to do in later videos, because I'd love to hear from you, I'd love to hear your opinions, and I'd love to get some ideas about what you would like to see. But more importantly, I just want to hear about you guys. I'd like to get to know you a little bit more. For the muzzle and the mouth, I want a little bit more orange in there, but I am just building up in it exactly the same way, starting with the black, then the brown, adding a little bit of orange to the mouth and then building up with those yellows. Sometimes with a leopard I like to put in some hints of green just because of that green reflecting in that yellowy colour um, and I think that really makes it pop. For the mouth and the folds of the mouth I like to block down a little bit of blue first and then put the highlights in with some grey and some white just to really make it pop and really look give that mouth a wet appearance. So I haven't actually gone to the edge of the painting with my pastels yet because I want to put in the background. So for this I'm just using some soft pastels rather than the pastel pencils and I'm going to smudge them using my finger. The reason I'm wearing a glove is just so the oils of my skin don't mess with the pastel as I'm putting it down and it helps me not smudge it with my palms later on. For the background I'm just using a mix of yellow, some viridian green, some brown and a I think it's a sap green colour. Once I've got that background in place I then work 
round the edges and just refine the edges a little bit more like adding the whiskers and adding some loose hairs just to make it fit with the background a little bit better so it doesn't look as stuck onto the background. I like doing it in this way rather than just doing the background first and then drawing over the top because I think if you do them both sort of at the same time and just finalize the edges once that background is in place they just tie together a little bit more and a little bit nicer. I got the reference photo for this image from a website called Pixabay. If you don't know what that is, you should definitely check it out because obviously there's a lot of copyright issues with just taking images from the internet, so you can't really do that. But using Pixabay, uh, it's a royalty free website where you can just use the images for creative purposes and I find tons of wildlife pictures and other pictures so whatever you like to paint or draw you can find them on there and you can use them without having to worry about copyrights or hopefully without worrying about copyright. Sometimes you yeah, just have to double check just to make sure that nobody's actually stolen somebody else's picture and put it on Pixabay. But most of the time you are okay with just using the pictures for whatever purpose you need them for. So just because of where the rest of the background was and I didn't want my hand to smudge the painting later on, I actually filled in the rest of the background before I started working on the back of the leopard. This again was just to prevent smudging. Ideally, I would have rather finished the leopard's back mostly, then put the background in and then just tied them both together. But I couldn't for this one. I mean, I could have done if I'd have used a paper to, piece of paper to lean on, that would have probably stopped me from smudging, but I really couldn't be bothered. One of the big questions I always get asked when using pastels and sort of seeing this is what paper I use. So I'm using um, Pastel Mat by Claire Fontaine and I just find it a fantastic paper to use. It really, really holds on to all of those layers really really well and it doesn't break so the surface doesn't get broken as we use more layers. Another question that I'm asked quite a lot is how I sharpen my pastel pencils. When I first started out about a year ago using the pastel pencils I tried using a pencil sharpener and I just found that the pastels broke a lot and it didn't really work very well and the way that I sharpen them now is I use a knife. So I use a Stanley knife or an X-Acto knife if you're in America and I just use that to cut away the wood and then I use a piece of sandpaper just to file, file it down into a sharp point. Uh, but for this one I wasn't really too bothered about having them super sharp so I just used a knife to sharpen them. So as I'm copying my reference photo, I am paying attention to the direction of the fur that I'm actually drawing. I'm not just doing it all in one direction, I am actually looking where the start of that individual strand of fur is, which way it flows, whether it bends to the left, to the right, whether it's up and down, and I try and match that as closely as possible to the form of the leopard, so the shape of the leopard, that 3D structure. If you can get that fur to match that 3D structure, it'll really make your leopard come alive.
So I'm actually just creating this with the 24 piece Derwent pastel pencil set. I would love to get my hands on some more colours uh, because I don't really think there's enough for the way that I work. I could do with a few more. But the 24 set is perfect if you're just starting out, like I am really, I'm only a year into using pastels. But I would love to try out some more colours. So Derwent, if you're watching this, please send me some more pastel pencils. And this is then pretty much it. I'm just refining the drawing now, add the whiskers with the white pencil, and that's basically done. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please make sure to hit that subscribe button. And for more wildlife art tips, head over to studiowildlife.com.